First, I was just curious what your thoughts are with the overall state of the Republican Party, both nationally and in our region. Well, I think, you know, my what I see as the Republican Party is um, a party that believes in, well, believes in the Constitution, uh, believes in limited government, lower taxes, free enterprise. Um, I definitely think that making sure that that is what still defines the party is 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 part of my role right now. Um, you know, this isn't about certain personalities. Um, it's about the future of, are we still gonna be the party that believes in those things? Um, you know, if, if we were gonna, if we were gonna call it quits today, I would say, oh, yeah, that's questionable. Um, but you know, this last week I just, I saw a letter from, it was the teenage Republicans of like Virginia and South Carolina, I want to say North Carolina, like several like Southern states sent a letter, just teenage Republicans um, saying like, we denounce QAnon. We denounce this, you know, these conspiracy theories. And I loved it because that to me is the future. I think I retweeted it just to kind of give them an out of, out of girl, out of boy, because they get it. Um, and because of them, I think we are going to get to where we need to be. You know, I think that there is a group of people, though, who don't necessarily believe in space lasers that start fires or, you know, a secret cabal of, of child predators who are eating children, that kind of really wild stuff. But there is a large faction of people who are in that kind of conspiracy theory realm when it comes to the belief of a false flag assault on the Capitol or a election that was stolen. Um, yeah. How do you how do you. How do you, you handle that type of divide in the party that doesn't really rely on extremely wild conspiracy theories, but instead are hinging on conspiracy theories pushed by our former president and by current leaders in the Republican Party? You're absolutely, that is exactly the question I am wrestling with is how do we bring um, full truth to people who are dealing in half truths? Some of them know and some of them don't. Um, so that is exactly, I think what I'm work, uh, that's what I'm working towards. Um, and, and from, so how can I impact that? I can, I can speak the truth kindly. I don't have to do it in a fit of rage, but I need to reinforce that. We did not get here overnight. We did not get to this place where conspiracy theories, like people believe them. Um, it took, it took time and it took a lot of layer upon layer. So I, I, it's going to take us some time to get out of it, but I think it starts with telling the truth. You know, I saw it was in January, January 4th, uh, the Bulwark put a, uh, a, a opinion piece out by the mayor of Oklahoma City. And it, I didn't know who the guy was. I didn't know anything about it. But what he was talking about was the 12 uh, senators who, who signed the letter to, you know, upend the Electoral College based on what in their letter says it. Um, what people perceive to be, you know, they, the senators were like, well, we're not saying it was fraud, but they think it was, so we're gonna object. And this, this mayor just said, I didn't see them. I saw me at my first, uh, you know, town hall where someone had some crazy idea for me. And rather than me saying back to them, no, we can't cover, you know, the whole back end in cement and no, your company can't do that, right? He said, we'll see. And he went on to talk about how we'll see is the easy way out and how if you take the time to explain things and be truthful, people may not always agree, but they're going to respect you. And man, that spoke to me. Oh, I mean, I, I've been in those situations in town meetings or, or I've had a constituent say something like, you know, hey, can you help me get this contract for such and such? And in my mind, I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's unethical, illegal. I don't even think your company could do it well. Like it's there's a million reasons, right? But rather than say that, I've said, oh, you know, why don't we just do some research? You know, you kind of put it off. And so for me, how do I stop doing that? And how do we collectively stop doing that? And it will take a little time, but we can get there. Truth is truth. It does win out, I believe. Well, you so the leaders in your party in Washington have have indicated some anger at you for how outspoken you have been about some of the things you're talking about and your uh, your decision to uh, to support the impeachment of the president. And the I know you don't represent Oregon, but considering the region, you know, the Oregon Republican Party put out a statement supporting the belief that there is growing evidence of a false flag, which is nonsense. Mm -hmm. 
how dangerous do you think it is when you have people who are currently in leadership who aren't looking at things through the lens of reality? It's devastatingly dangerous. What more proof do we need than the fact that there are, that, that a United States Capitol Police officer lied and, you know, he, he was laid in state in the rotunda that, um, you know, his body did to, so that people could pay honor to him. He literally was bludgeoned to death by people claiming God, claiming uh, they were doing the right thing, that this was 1776. How much more proof do we need that it is deadly dangerous to fan the flames of conspiracy and half truth? I mean, like, that's why these, these teenage Republicans showed more courage than a lot of elected leaders by saying, time out, that's crazy. And I think, um, I, I just think we have to shift gears. And it's not just one party, that's the funny thing. And I would say to my Democratic friends, you know, all these media folks are like, yeah, Republicans, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, go speak the truth to your tribe because you got some crazies as well who've done things all summer, right? I, I'm not the ones they're going to listen to. They're not going to listen to me. I'm trying to take on the inconsistencies on my own side and my own team. You go do that too. And together, demonstrating a, a commitment to that, I think we can get where we need to be. You know, just to, to speak it, speak about it in the terms of, of politics and to separate it from, you know, teenagers writing in messages and things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do believe, I feel optimistic that, that most people in, in public office are there because it's a calling and they feel the need to do, to do the right thing. So you have these Republicans who are in office who want to have the power to do what they believe is the right thing, but they have to rely on a base that believes in some ways some of these untrue things. And if they are to turn their back on those people and say, you are wrong and what you're doing is spreading lies, they risk not being reelected, either losing to another candidate in their party or losing to the opposite party. So how do you balance that fight to be relevant and elected and in control while at the same time, maybe having to turn away some of the people who put you there? I think, well, first you have to be willing to give up control. I think anybody in any leadership position will tell you the tighter you cling to it, the less authority you actually have. And I don't know if I could demonstrate a greater example of that than my vote recently, right? Republicans brought me to the dance. And so, and, and amazing independence in my district. Democrats did not vote for me in large. Some did, but in large in the last two elections, I mean, you, these were tough elections where Democrats targeted me. Um, so, so I, I definitely have, am coming face to face with that reality, but what I'm seeing and as I'm talking to people, by and large, maybe they don't agree with the vote, but they, they trust me. And that's what I think we have to restore. Maybe they don't think I should have done it, um, but it's not, but, but when you get the chance to make the case, uh, you earn some respect. Again, you're not gonna with the fringe, and I'm not after the fringe. We're not the party of white supremacy. We're not the party of QAnon. We're not the party of Proud Boys. I don't want their votes, right? Um, and I'm obviously not gonna get them. But there are a lot of people who um, I think through fear, um, through very real fears of, you know, I, I just think it's so, it's so prescient to talk about, um, you know, the cancel culture. And I'm not talking about elected leaders who say they're getting canceled because they have the largest microphone in the world. I'm talking about, you know, the small business owner who, uh, you know, did something in some way and, and all of a sudden was attacked on social media and lost their business and it was, it was unjust. Those things do happen, which is why there's this little bit of fear that if I stand up for what I believe in, or if I do something that I think is right, and especially honestly, especially as Republican in the Northwest, um, that, that these liberal groups are going to circle around and come after my business, come after my integrity, come after my name. I've had Republicans, um, you know, even my last election, I said, hey, can, you know, we've done this together on this thing, or even independence, you know, would you do a, a letter to the editor? Or would you, you know, want to be in a TV commercial? And some have said, no, because I don't want my business to get retribution. That's ridiculous. So we also have to hit those realities head on because those little bits of fear in people create the space 
so that when somebody selling, you know, a snake oil salesman comes in with a bill of goods saying, I'll protect you from that. I'll fight for you. You, you know, you don't have to be a person of integrity. You don't have to abide by the things you believe. It's a space that can be inhabited. So I think we have to take on um, inconsistencies and we have to speak truth all the way around. But I think most people, I, like you said about most, most uh, elected officials get into this because it's a calling and they believe in it. That's totally true. Um, I think most people <laughs> are genuine and most people want to walk in, live in truth. And um, we can get there. I really think we can. I'm, I am 100% comfortable uh, at the fate, so to speak, my political career being the hands of the people in my district. I have no reservations, irrespective of how they vote in the next election. And I will say, I'm running in the next election. I'm not going anywhere. But I'm, com I'm comfortable with where they're going to go. Um, yeah. So you, you stood up and you had this... Um... You had this very passionate speech from the floor when, when discussing, discussing the impeachment of the president. And everybody back here at home went, hey, we know her. Um, but then <laughs> oh, the rest she's on national TV. <laughs> and, the rest of, and the rest of the country started Googling you. And, uh, and I'm, wondering, uh, I'm wondering what that was like, that moment when suddenly the entire country was very curious about who you were what you stood for, where you came from, and probably had an opinion about it that they wanted you to hear. What was the blowback like following some of the statements you've made? Totally mixed. You know, and somebody told me a long time ago in, in elected office, you're going to be shocked at who you thought would be an ally and who is not. And the champions that come out for you from out of nowhere. And that was re I was, I was reminded of that in the last month. Um, just the people who who come up and say and, and you know what was amazing i got a letter from a constituent this week um and they said uh it was with a check for twenty dollars and it said i didn't agree with what you know your impeachment vote and and i had sent a response and but i i read through you know your response and your thoughts and i respect it and i'm grateful you're you're serving me and here's 20 bucks <laughs> that man makes it so worth it. That just, that put me over the top. So I'm like, I don't care who's going to take a slice out of me on the national level. I'm a hundred percent comfortable at the hands of my voters. I really am. These, these aren't people, I didn't move into the district wanting to be important and be somebody. I grew up there and I want to serve this district. And I think even if people disagree with me, I would say judge me on my whole body of works and what I've done here. And I'm again, I'm at peace with that. I Worst feel like you, scenario, I lose my seat and I move into, I mean, I've always wanted to have 10 acres like out in Amboy somewhere and I get a pack of dogs and I let my kids go and I get to work on my sourdough starter. No, I'm kidding. I, I think I would be really, I, I, I love doing what I'm doing. I don't want to quit. You know, I feel like, you know, you keep saying um, that you're comfortable in this, this role, but I kind of feel like you're embracing this role in a way. Um, because we have now pivoted from kind of the discussion about the president and some uh, some kind of conspiracy, false information surrounding the things that he was saying to now uh, this uh, the, the Congresswoman Taylor Green and the discussion with her. So you came out with some strong language about some of the beliefs she has shared in the past, uh, dealing with really kooky things. You used words like dangerous or insane explain to me why you felt you needed to speak that way on this topic about you know some of the things she has posted before or said before or supported because it's not true and i wanted to be unequivocally clear i we are that is not our party we are not going to traffic in that maybe maybe up till you know okay Maybe that's where she's been, but going forward, that's not who we are. And those are, I have, I have, I do, I do feel that, um, you know, after January 6th, it, it wasn't, you know, back corner chat rooms. It was on full display, not just for our children and our grandchildren, right? But for the world. And this isn't, this is so much bigger than any one of us. 
uh, we can't get this wrong. I am not going to be in the generation of Americans who, who blows this amazing experiment, who lets it all go. I, I, will, I will not sit back on that. And, and the things that she said, I'm really hopeful she stops. I don't know that she will, but I'm going to give her the chance. Um, she, you know, she claims to have not known the truth. And she said, quote, been, a, been allowed to believe these things, which I was a little, I scratched my head because I'm like, you were, you know, a 45 year old woman <laughs> when you read these things. Um, but I'm going to give you, okay, fine. If you are going to disavow them uh, and not traffic in lies and conspiracies moving forward, when your people elected you knowing who you were, all right, I'll give you, I'm going to give you going to give you a little space, a little space. But that's why I think you saw my statement was as strong as it was, because I'm not going to give that kind of um, fear mongering and conspiracy any more space. Well, it has, it, she has space on committees. And I found that to be interesting. And I think that people would like some clarity on that, how you can, you know, yeah. describe someone's thinking is dangerous, and then allow them to continue to yeah. be in a decision making position. Well, she still gets a vote on the floor. So it's not that she wouldn't have voted on a bill that came out of committee anyway. So it, it, there was no actual, so in terms of like legislative impact, it didn't change her legislative impact. I actually would have argued, again, Nancy Pelosi was taking my advice, I would have left her on the education committee. And if I were them, I would have pulled together um, some hearings on school shootings and I'd have had people come in and testify and I would have had her face the truth of a situation. And I would allow her to ask questions and make her points to them. Why are we afraid to do that? I think, I think they did greater, if, they're, if the Democrats goal was to disempower her, it was a mistake. I think it would have been more effectual in bringing change to how she's operated to have her face to face in a hearing on school shootings and, so and defending her ideas. Like, I'm not saying she has to just take it all, but that I think when we run from telling the truth, <laughs> I mean, she's not, she's still gonna have just as much ability to vote yes or no on those same pieces of legislation as she would have on the committee. So instead of, so instead of getting her off the committees, pull back the curtain and make her kind of face the music on her own, you know, see, see what she actually thinks on these yeah. topics. And let her share what she thinks and let people, I mean, this is Congress. Why in the world wouldn't we have an actual debate on an issue? Like relegating it to social media and duking it out. I don't know how that gets us any closer to doing the work of the American people. Right. I don't know how that, and again, I would argue it's going to, yeah, I, 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 you know, when people talk about um, there, so there's two thoughts, you know, this is a process, there's a process vote. Again, I get to vote up or down. Um, I do think it would have been more constructive for her. I and mean, maybe don't, you know, if you, if, if you don't want to do a school shooting hearing, I get that. You don't want to, you know, there's a lot of sensitivity um, to doing that the right way. But there, that's also the labor committee. You know, she's been in business. Why not? I mean, there's so many ways you could have made it, I feel like, constructive. Because that's the goal. I'm not trying to punish anybody or be self-righteous or think I have the corner on the right way to do everything. I obviously don't. But I do think I have some observations about how to move forward. You know, I've been one of the most bipartisan members of Congress. And I've had success under Democrat uh, presidents and Republican presidents getting legislation signed into law um, that solves problems for people in our region and across this nation. Again, I don't have a corner on the right way to do things, but I have observed that when you put people in the same room and ask them to work together, like on committees, um, you can actually, that, that's where change happens. That's how you move things forward. That's how the whole, that's how the entire um, Republic was founded. And if you look at the Constitutional Convention and then the way they came up with the Constitution, I mean, they used to duel it out. <laughs> I'm not recommending we go back to that, but let's, let's duel it out with ideas and words. I don't know. Maybe time will tell whether we should do other things or whether that's the right approach. That's just my idea on it. 
Do you think that Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is fit to hold that position, to make decisions that impact this nation? I wouldn't have voted for her if I was one of her constituents. Not a chance. But um, her constituents did. And I think there, there are questions about, um, uh, you know, whether or not, whether or not they will again. Um, she has been here a month. Uh, I think that I've been honest with my conference and my leadership about what I think about what other people like her are bringing to the conference. Um, we'll see. We'll see whether or not what she has said is if she's well, either somebody, again. well, either she believe, I mean, I, th I think of it one of two ways, either she believes the things that, that she's saying she doesn't believe, or she is manipulated, able to be manipulated in a way that gives me concern considering the power she holds. Do you feel that that's the power a she holds? That's the great thing about a, a system of checks and balances. <laughs> She's one of 435 um, in the minority. Uh, and it has, we have also have the Senate and then we also have to get things through a presidency. That's the beauty of this system. No one actually holds all the cards and that's the point. And we're going to check and balance one another. But again, um, you know, one of the reasons I didn't vote against seating the electors on the electoral college process was because the citizens of Pennsylvania and Arizona and North Carolina elected people in their state and those bodies through the constitutional process chose to send us the electors. Um, I remember making the point on the floor, how do I know better than the citizens of Arizona or Pennsylvania or North Carolina um, you know, how does this congresswoman from Washington know better than them who they should be sending here? If it was true in January, at the beginning of January, it's still true at the end of, I should say, the beginning of February. Um, now, the same is true of the president, right? I, I voted to impeach him, not, you know, it was, it was a very, very clear thing that happened on his watch while he was the commander in chief. I'm not afraid uh, to take action if it's, you know, if, if something happens on her watch or as it did on his watch. But again, I'm not gonna supersede the role of the voters in her district. Um, yeah. So we've been talking a lot about this potential for another party or some kind of fracture happening in the Republican party. And I don't wanna overblow that. I mean, I, I know my history and the, the possibility or even the strategic desire for something like that to happen would, would be catastrophic for conservative voters. Um, but what are, you, what are your thoughts about that conversation, about the, where the party is moving forward and if there really is that deep of a cut between the way people think and the Republican Party? Time will tell. I think it would be destructive for us to, to split off, but I can't control what other people are gonna do. I can tell you, I'm not going anywhere. Um, you know, my goal is to uh, just reestablish who we are based on the principles we've always espoused. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna let people push me out who say, because I didn't swear fealty to a personality, that that means I'm no longer a Republican. No, I actually think we should turn that a bit and say, prove to us, you understand the values of the Republican Party and you want to fight for them. Defending the Constitution tends to be chief of chief, you know, chief top of there. Um, but time will tell. I can't control what other people are going to do. And I do think we're at an inflection point. I do think we're in a place we haven't been, at least certainly in a generation. Um, I just have this, I really do have, it's almost an unwavering faith in the American people though, and in, the, in, in a vast majority of Republican voters. I, I, because in there, whether or not there, there are some that are frustrated, um, they're gonna do the right thing for the right reasons. Was it Churchill or it's the quote that he gets attributed to, that Americans will do that after they've exhausted all of their options? Um, that, you know, that could be true, my hope is it's not. Well, I just, uh, one more question for you, and this is kind of a, I guess, a softball, but I was just curious if you feel like you have kind of uh, entered a new chapter of your 
of your career in public office? I mean, this was a pretty defining moment, I think, for the country. And, and then you, you stepped into that and it became, I think, you know, one of the defining moments of, of your time in public service. And I'm wondering if you feel, if you feel that that is true and what the next step or the future of, of, of who you are, I'm wondering what that is for the people of Southwest Washington. My husband and I have had that conversation this last week, multiple times, like, oh, this, I had no control over whether or not this was going to happen. I just had control over how I was going to walk through this stage, right? Um, and it definitely has, it does feel like, I don't know how, uh, I don't, I don't know how, you know, I, I have always had the mindset, I'm going to keep my head down and work hard. I have zero interest in becoming a national celebrity. I have, for the last 10 years, turned down almost all national media. Like, I don't do national media. It's just, why? That's not my goal. I really have wanted to be known locally as someone who solves problems for my region. Pretty simple. Um, and you're right. <laughs> uh, there's been a lot more opportunities to speak out nationally. And I've been really, really choosy about it because I have zero desire to go on liberal news networks and bash my own team. And those are most of the opportunities I have, <laughs> to be honest. It's mostly come tell us all the bad stuff you can about Republicans. Again, how is that constructive? That's not my goal. My goal is to see a stronger Republican party. So to the degree I have an ability to influence that nationally, I will, but it's also, I'm not going to lose sight of the whole reason I have this seat is to solve problems for people, especially in Southwest Washington, but for the country as a whole. So we'll see. I don't know what's going to change and what opportunities I have. I will take them if I think it's going to help us make a stronger, oh, and there go the votes, um, a stronger system. Um, but again, I'm still not seeking out, I don't, I don't want to be nationally uh, notorious. <laughs> That's, others like that lane. It's not my lane.